All right, people. We shall pay tribute by watching the end of Bardwell, as usual. Yeah, Signal Path is the name of the band. I'm not going to play it because I don't want to risk getting copyright strike. Is this video getting a copyright strike? But, uh, yeah. Look at the parts list from this old video. Jeez. Look at the parts list from this old video. QAVR. <laughs> Betaflight F3. Betaflight 317. X-Racer Quadrant. Rotor 2205 motor. X-Racer Quadrant. 2205 motor. Oh, my gosh. Wow, Red Cam Eagle. Wow. Let's look, let's look. That inception. All right, I'm getting ready while we finish up with Bardwell. Now he's got no audio at all. <laughs> well, we are going to wrap up. We'll go out on this madness. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys. That's going to do it for this live stream. Thank you so much. I'm cutting into Seattle. Seattle is up. Seattle is close to my live stream. Get out of here. Finish up today. Thank you guys so much for coming out. Uh, I'm just going to finish up. I'll see you guys Sunday at 1 p.m. when I have my next live stream. And um, Ciotti is live right now on his uh, live stream link posted here in the chat. That is going to do it for this stream. See you later. <laughs> Kyle K over on Joshua's channel saying I should do another vertical. Nice. <laughs> All right, people. Let me... Get us going here. Oh, wait, wait. Oh, God, it's going to start autoplaying. Don't autoplay, YouTube. Come on, man. Um, there's a crossfire on the floor flashing away. What's up, Griffin? Uh, what did I do to the Acrobat? No, remember the uh, flight controller blew up? Um, new one finally came in. So, vertical stream. <laughs> I don't know if I'll ever do that again. If, if you guys bug me... Maybe I'll do it again. Let me uh, let me make sure the camera's pointing the right direction and stuff like that. Um, so, 
Here's the first question. What do we do tonight? Um, we've got two things. House blog. I will answer that in a second. We've got two things to do. We've got to fix the, or at least get started, fixing the Acrobrat. Oh, God. Um, putting a new flight controller in um, to replace the one that blew up. And we also need to get the 6-inch rig um, bound. Thank you, Enzo. YouTube doesn't want to show the video. What video? What's going on? Are things working? Uh-oh. Are we not? Oh, man. What? Are you kidding me? Hold on. It looks like I'm streaming. Can you guys see me? Working fine. Okay, cool. It's weird. It won't... Um... I'm trying to watch it so that I can line the camera up, but it won't uh, it won't work for me. Very strange. Uh, <laughs> nice license. <laughs> it's working. All right, cool. Thanks, guys. Uh, let me just get on in here and click a couple buttons. Uh, so yeah, we need to figure out what we're gonna do first here. Um, beta flight and crossfire on the 6S five inch rig that we've been working on or are we going to fix the Acrobrat? Um, so throw it in the comments, either put the word Acrobrat or 6S, um, and I'll do whatever you guys want me to do first, um, because if you've been around here once or twice, you'll know that I'll probably only get one of them done. <laughs> so, um, all right, so here comes the, uh, here come the comments. And thus far, it looks pretty even. Although, no, it looks like Acro... Wow, okay, yeah, yeah, we're doing the Acrobat first, it looks like. <laughs> Craft King, Christopher Wheeler, Ion are the only ones that have said success so far, so I think it's going to be the Brat. Um... <laughs> nice, Shane. <laughs> oh, you know what? I, need to do... I actually do need to do that so I can fly the damn... Actually, no, I can fly it on... I can fly it and tune it on Crossfire. Sounds like we're doing the um, nice Nabi. Good to hear that. Um, all right, we're doing the Acrobrat. Very cool. Thanks for coming, everybody. My name's Aaron Ciotti. Uh, all my friends call me Ciotti, and so should you. Uh, thanks for coming on over from. <laughs> thanks, Jamie. <laughs> thanks for coming on over from uh, Joshua Bardwell's stream. Uh, it is my duty to inform you all that. I do not have a uh, super chat set up because I don't have enough watch hours. Every single one of you in here is helping me out with that, and I thank you very much. Uh, we're at like 1,500 or so watch hours. We got to get up to 4,000. So we got some work to do, but I'm just going to keep pounding away on these live streams um, so that, and yes, I'm on my phone, uh, still on my phone. Uh, so yeah, thank you everybody that uh, watches these live and Big thanks to everybody that watches the recorded versions of these. Um, we're getting there. We can do it, as Griffin just said. Uh, we will We will get there. But in the interim, uh, become a Patreon. I use my Patreon posts as like just a dumping ground for all my deepest and darkest FPV thoughts. Um, so get on over there. Uh, for as little as three bucks, you can get access. All of the tier, the tiers are just like Joshua Bardwell's, where... Um, you know, whatever you think, whatever you can afford, whatever, whatever you think I've earned, um, that's what I want you to, to donate. Um, and then it's going to get you access uh, to the site. I got unreleased videos in there, you know, a lot of like one pack simple edits, just stuff that I don't release to the, the whole wide world. Um, and all kinds of other fun stuff. Articles I've written, reviews, um, lots and lots and lots of micro secrets. So here you go. Here is the link to that. Um, thank you, D. Barberine, who just subbed. Um, and again, thanks to everybody else. It really, really, really means a lot to me um, that you guys are uh, willing to uh, to donate to the cause and and kind of help me out. Um, it, it really does make a difference. And it, among other things, it just keeps me motivated. Uh, it really keeps me honest. And um, yeah, it just means a lot, guys. It really does. Uh, so, House Blog says props off. Absolutely. Um, 
think that's about it. We can kind of dive in. Uh, past couple of streams, I have been... Um, let me just switch mounts for this. All right, here we go. So past couple of streams, I've kind of backed off. I, I, I love the idea of trying to... Um, trying to read everybody's comments and answer everybody's questions, but I don't get any work done when I do that. Um, so last couple of streams I've been trying to um, just kind of, uh, yeah, Kyle, I'm, I'm, I'm getting it. I'm getting it fixed up. Uh, last few streams I've been mixing it up and I'll do like five or ten minutes of work and then um, look up at the, uh, look up at the stream. What are you saying, Craft King? Private? Got to be on your end? What do you mean? Oh, I gotta change it from top chat to, uh, to live chat. There we go. Okay. Uh, so, yeah. I'm gonna try to, to continue to sort of refine that. So, if you ask a question, I have a big, um, I have a big chat window here. So, I can catch about twice as many comments as you guys. So, like, if your question goes, like, two full screens off, um, you're probably going to have to ask it again. Um, I apologize for that, but I just don't have the ability to focus on what I'm doing with this build and intelligently answer questions at the same time. So, uh, that's out of the way. I'm trying to think of what other housekeeping things that uh, I should go over before we just dive in. Uh, let me just mess with this stand a little bit, just to kind of get this a little closer to me. Okay, come on now. Come on now, stand. Don't, don't be a dick. There we go. That's a little better. That's a lot better. What motors are they on the Brat? The Naked Pilot asks. Uh, so these are prototype. T motors. These are going to be uh, T motors new F20. Uh, this is going to be the F20 Pro 3, I believe. And uh, I've been helping them out a little bit to, to kind of get some feedback on them. They are absolutely fantastic. Um, they are 1507 4000 ish, um, 4000 ish kV. I'm not totally sure on the KV, but the big thing about these motors is that they are smooth. It's impossible for me to show you this, um, uh, or is it? Let me see if let me see if I have a really notchy micro motor floating around. Um, I don't know if I do. Well. So when you when you turn a motor by hand, and th this isn't the whole story, but this has proven to be accurate. Um, yeah, Private Island. All I do is wave my hands on my streams. That's 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 the deal. That's what you get to look at. It might as well be a podcast. Um, but <laughs> when you spin a motor by hand, it is either very very notchy or smooth or somewhere in between. Um, technically speaking, if the ESCs that we were running were perfect. Um, and some other things came together, this would not make a difference. Uh, but it does. Here in the real world, it definitely does make a difference. And the difference is that um, when you spin a motor by hand and it's smooth, it will be smooth in the air. The, the way that this, the poles of the stators and the magnets work, um, they can cause very abrupt... Uh, notch sort of like notchiness in the motor um, and when there is that notchiness and it starts spinning at God knows how many tens of thousands of RPMs um, that vibration goes into the entire frame and what I have found and a lot of other folks have found that when you get a micro motor that is really notchy that has really defined big steps in the w when you spin it by hand uh, those are just going to be sort of untunable um, not fully untunable, but you're not going to be able to get a good solid locked in tune with those. And they're also, if you're trying to run an HD cam, uh, all of our HD cam options have a real hard time with jello, so they're going to cause a lot of jello as well. Uh, so these represent the second set 
of smooth motors that we've got uh, for micros. The first was the, uh, Tommy were uh, Tommy's Acrobrat 1407s, um, and they were brilliantly smooth, but they were unfortunately very fragile. The um, they were made for him by Rotorex, and they do a very strange bell design, uh, and, it, and and the bell ended up being very very weak. Unfortunately, um, but other than that, I mean, if you didn't crash them, they were totally fine. These guys should be the answer to all of us acrobat um, freaks' prayers. <laughs> uh, they are a 1507. I don't love how tall the stator is. I wish they were like a 1506 or a 1505. Um, Craft King, yeah, bigger bell spacing, weaker magnets. You can also mess around with how many magnets there are and how many stator poles there are. There's a lot of different things you can do. Um, and, it, and it's great that a motor manufacturer is finally doing it for micro motors. Um, five inch motors are not, five inch motors, I think, went through this adjustment period a long time ago. Um, and, and they're all fairly smooth. Uh, but micro motors are really, uh, have been really underpowered. So I think that the manufacturers sort of made some compromises and, and let that notchiness creep in there, also mainly because micros were typically the domain of racers. Um, and for a racer, that's kind of fine. You don't have to go ballistic. You don't have to have such a, a smooth tune um, on a racing rig, as I'm sure you guys can guess. But uh, regardless of that, these motors are going to be great. Uh, I'm really hoping that those iFlight uh, 1507s are also going to be good, but it really all depends on how they manufacture them. If, if they made them to be really powerful, they're probably going to be notchy, um, and that's going to be really tough on a rig with HD. So, uh, that answers the question that I'm sure will pop up at least once or twice more. Hopefully you guys that are in here can uh, field that for me if you don't mind. I'm going to throw up the Patreon link one more time, just for good measure. There you guys go. Uh, like I said, three bucks or more, and you get access. Lots and lots and lots of really good stuff on there. Um, you know, the folks that are currently patrons can can tell you they've been they've been loving the content that I've been putting up. So you know, hopefully for three dollars, I can save you um, twenty or thirty or forty by uh, guiding you towards the right parts and pieces and or fixing a problem before you buy something to try to repair it. Blah 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 blah. So since you guys voted for the Acrobrat. We are going to work on this first. Uh, for the uh, contestants that have been watching, you will know that I took this apart because uh, the flight controller that I just installed just randomly blew up. There, there was It was the F4 version of this Talon, um, which has been discontinued. I don't know if this was the reason why it was discontinued, but um, there was a little bit of a bridge, and, and it, it's laid out a little differently than this. Um, but there was a little bit of a, uh, a solder bridge between one of the pins on the flight controller and the motor signal input, um, which I, I was lucky enough that night that we were doing the stream, there were a couple um, electrical engineers in the chat, um, and they said basically with, these, with our tiny little boards, um, they, they put solder paste down and then they put all the components on top. And uh, the, the guy said that basically it looked, he sees it all the time in his line of work, and it, he just said it looked like they were a little bit uh, sloppy with the solder paste. Um, and that's what caused that. So what we learned from that, actually, is, um, Jason, that's a good question. Um, I, I do want to answer that, but let me, let me finish this thought because I will definitely forget it. Um, what we learned with that is... Before you plug a battery in, amongst all the other things that you're going to do, look at the components. If I had looked at the flight controller with a, a little 5X loop, which everybody should have, um, you can get these for like nothing on Amazon, 5X L-O-U-P-E, 5X is the amount of magnification. Um, if I had just taken a minute to sit here and look at all the components on this, I would have Maybe, maybe I would have seen that solder bridge. Um, so I'm going to practice what I preach, and I'm going to do that right now because I, I told myself to do it every time I took something out of the packaging, and I forgot today. But you guys are awesome, and I remembered to tell you guys, so now I'm remembering myself. So, yeah, love you guys. So hold on. Let me just really quickly look. Uh, this is great television, I'm sure. Uh, okay, so everything looks fine. So this, while I'm looking at this, 
This is the newer F7 variant of the um, Talon 20x20 flight controller. The, the Talon 20x20 flight controller is my preferred um, micro and even at this point uh, 5 inch flight controller since I run the glide frames and uh, I run a 20x20 flight controller up in the front in front of the uh, between the camera and the uh, and the ESC and what the hell is that? Is that just a little hair? Hold up! It's probably just a little hair. Yeah, it's just a little hair. Okay, so I checked all the little pins on this guy and uh, and and we're good. I don't see any obvious um, solder bridges. So in theory, this one won't blow up the second that I plug it in. Um, Jason Coley has a, a very interesting question. Any suggestions on how to scrub speed when you need to without losing camera angle? Um, Jason, tell me a little bit more. So are you talking about like, when you say scrub, I, that as, as someone who went to, to university almost 20 years ago for TV radio, when you say scrub, it makes me think of uh, video editing. Um, I get the feeling that you're talking about flying. So you got your nose down, you're flying along. Are you asking how to scrub speed without tilting the camera up? Is, is, that, what you're, is that what you're referring to? Um, because if that's the question, the only way to do it, it, exactly, okay. So the only real way to do it is to come off of the throttle and to use less throttle. And I mean, typically what's gonna happen at that point is you're gonna lose altitude. So like, if you've got a bunch of altitude, sure, jump off the throttle and you will naturally just kind of slow down. Um, otherwise, I mean, if you're low to the ground and, and you're you know maintaining altitude, if you come off the throttle, you're gonna hit the ground. So there's really no way to do it um, without Redu without pitching back and, and pointing the camera upwards. Um, personally, what I do when I need to do that is just very, very gently pitch back. And if you do it gently enough, people like won't. So you have to kind of look ahead. One of the things I used to, t what's up Ramon? Um, one of the things I used to teach my students when I would um, instruct, I, I was a autocross instructor for almost 10 years um, at the racetrack. And one of the things, one of the very basic things I would train all my students is look ahead. Look as far ahead as your eyes can, like, like resolve. <laughs> like, as good as your vision is, look all the way as far ahead as you possibly can. And when you do that, what happens is your peripheral vision sees everything in the foreground that it needs to see. And if you need to really look at something, you just shift your eyes real quick and you're good. If you're doing that when you're flying these, if you're looking far ahead, you're gonna hopefully see the reason why you want to slow down as early as possible so you can start pitching back slowly. And as you pitch back slowly, you're also gonna be able to come off the throttle. So you're gonna do two things at once. You're gonna shave speed by coming off the throttle. And the reason why is when you're up here, a good portion of your, of your thrust is creating forward motion, but a good portion is creating uh, upward motion, well, keeping you in the air, I should say. When you start to pitch back like this nice and slow, you have less, less of your thrust is being used to push you forward and more of it is being used to push you upwards. So you'll be able to naturally pitch back slowly and come off the throttle and that's gonna shave, um, that's gonna shave the, the momentum that like you're asking. So um, really, really, really good question. If you guys have any like, I, I, I kind of focus more to be honest on flying than building. Um, so like the, fl I love the flying questions and, um, you know, coming from like this instruction kind of motorsports background, um, yeah, it, it's with one of the other things that I would tell folks that were new is like, Hey, stop spending money in your car, spend money on you. Um, you learn to drive and then build the car around you. Um, and I think that quads are very, very similar. You know, you can get really, um, you can get really hung up on, oh, I gotta have the best flying rig, it'll make me a better pilot, or I have to go 6S or whatever. Um, it's just not true. Whatever you've got, fly the shit out of it. Fly it as much as you possibly can, and two things are gonna happen. Of course, it's, it's gonna be a ton of fun because you're gonna get better and better and better, but it's also gonna like help you with everything else. It's gonna help you understand the, the different motors that you put on. It'll help you understand the difference between 4S and 6S. Um, 
So I really recommend like just focusing on flying for a while. I'm talking like a thousand plus batteries. Just focus on flying for that many batteries. Um, and if you can kind of like get over that hump, you're gonna have all of this stick time and you're gonna have a better, um, uh, just a better feeling for everything else that's gonna happen with tuning, with building, with um, you know, certain combinations of parts. Um, so there you go. There's some, uh, there's some advice for you guys that I found to be very, very true in my sort of journey over the last two and a half years um, as a pilot builder or whatever. Uh, Jonathan K asks, as a beginner, what moves should I concentrate most on? I don't know if there's any specific ones. Just kind of... I want to just say, like, go fly, but that's not true. You, you, you do have to have some sort of a... You do have to spend a little bit of time kind of practicing. You can't always... Well, I mean, you can, but um, if you just always go out and rip balls... Um, you're not going to do things like, um, you're not going to do the same move over and over again. So like, at least once in a while, more often if, if, if it's fun for you, and if you can stomach it, um, go out and do like an entire battery for, with, find a good like power loop spot, you know, like a branch on a tree or a, a soccer goal or something, and just power loop the damn thing for the entire battery. Just like, see how many you can do in a row. and. By doing the same thing over and over and over again like that, you're going to pick up on like these little, like the finer points and, and the little um, intricacies of that particular movement. Um, it, it's what I used to do in the simulator a lot. Uh, but doing it for real is, is even better. And if you can find like a nice soft grasp spot, um, you know, even better yet. So, yeah, I, I think. I'm, I'm not going to say, like, do X, Y, or Z moves, but what I am going to say is um, just force yourself to practice, <laughs> um, I guess, is, is one way of, of kind of putting it. And, and it's true. And, and I never liked practicing either. You know, I, I had to, like, I, I had to, like, uh, sort of convince myself to do it by going, like, all right, well, I've got six batteries, so I'll, I'll practice for two, and then I'll rip balls for the other four. Uh, <laughs> So, yeah. Oh, uh, Mr. Tux just had a great one. Uh, just fly really low. Yeah, flying super, super, super low uh, will drive throttle control into your brain. Um, it will also... You'll also crash a lot doing it. So have turtle mode on and, and don't be half a mile away from yourself when you're doing it. Uh, but, yeah, flying low is, is something that is a skill that you will net I mean you will always be working on that because it's it's just throttle control and every single there's not like it's hard to practice right because when you're flying low the amount your throttle relates to up and down movement is uh, dependent upon the amount of pitch that you're at so if you're at like 40 degrees pitch versus 35 degrees pitch you're gonna be at a whole different spot in the throttle um, so that's why, and, and also your motors are going to make it have a different power band there. Your props are going to function a little bit different there. Um, so like it, it really, it's just, it's just one of those things that you'll work on forever and, um, you kind of can't spend enough time doing. It was also kind of one of my secrets for a long time with micros. Uh, one of the things about micros is they don't carry, they don't cover ground, uh, like a five inch rig basically because they're just not making as much uh, total thrust. Um, if, if you think about it in car terms, right, a um, 150 horsepower, 2,000 pound Miata and a, um, let's just say, a 400 horsepower, 4,000 pound Dodge Charger, uh, those two cars, believe it or not, uh, are going to be just about so if we take traction out of the out of the equation right Let, let's say they both have the same amount of traction um the miata is actually going to keep up for a while uh but then as the speeds rise the wind resistance rises and the miata is just straight up not going to have the horsepower to push the same amount of air yes the miata is, has a lower drag coefficient because it's smaller and rounder and blah 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 but um, at the end of the day, it is gonna the, the charger is gonna come rampaging past it, 
um, at probably 40, 50 miles an hour, uh, maybe a little higher than that. And it's literally just because of the wind resistance. Um, and the thing you want to remember about wind resistance is it's square. It's, it's, it's a square root, right? So like when you double when you double your speed from 40 to 80, the wind resistance goes up by not double, but four times. Um, so with micros, one of the things, I, I kind of learned that early on and I thought, okay, well, how the hell do I give these things a sense of speed? And the answer was flying really low to the ground. By flying low to the ground, you can fill up half the frame with the grass or the pavement whizzing by. Um, and it just, and you appear to be going a lot faster than you actually are. Um, and that's one of the reasons why I just, like, my autopilot is to fly very, very low to the ground. Like, if I'm just flying a straight line, it's going to be as low as I possibly can um, because of sort of, like, muscle memory. Jonathan K says, flipping and rolling close to the ground still terrifies you. It shouldn't because if you hit the ground, you won't be very high, so you won't hit it very hard. So you'll scrape stuff up. So flip and roll close to the ground all day. You'll get it. And it's super fun. Um, all right. So let's dive. Uh, uh, I just saw a good one. Griffin FPV says, tie and building acrobat with the diagram. And it's still giving me trouble on top of your bad side. And Griffin, what's going on? Can I help? Um, let's dive on in here and move some wires out of the way. Uh, of course, this flight controller is laid out completely different uh, than the F4 was. So, like, my positioning of these wires and the lengths that I cut these wires to is now screwed. Uh, but that's okay. That's not a big deal. Um, so, as I had discussed the first time we did this build... Um, one of the things that I find to be really important is um, double A my, um, I, my th I have anxiety issues and I chew my thumb and uh, this is a bacon band-aid because I ran out of regular band-aids so there's a bacon band-aid for you guys his cat bit him I wish I wish I had a <laughs> a, a non-mental illness related reason for uh, for my injury uh, so uh, when we first built this, I talked a lot about like how you orient your flight controller, which direction. So you can put it one, two, three, four different directions, although two of those directions are kind of stupid. We'll talk about that in a second. But you can also flip it upside down. There's absolutely no reason not to flip it upside down. And now you've got one, two, three, four more directions again. So eight different possibilities. But also, your ESC can be in a number of different, um, you know, the same, eight, eight different orientations. Um, my thought process behind this is uh, that with a micro, we, we really struggle to kind of cram everything in. That's going to be changing with the toothpick style builds and the um, all-in-one kind of setups. But for the time being, and, and, you know, my whole time with micros has been spent with 20 by 20s. Um, so I'm just going to stick with this. If you can save a little bit of space, in, in the car world they call it packaging. You have, alright, so in this case we've got one, two, three, four, five boards that we need to fit within a constrained amount of space. Um, alien style frames with standoffs, this becomes really important because if you really slam these stacks together and you use every little bit of extra space that you've got, you can literally lower your standoffs down to bring the battery down and to centralize your center of gravity more. And that tends to make a really big difference with micros, bigger, a bigger difference than with um, five inch rigs, according to Kebab. I, I don't know if I agree, I definitely don't disagree with that, but I, I don't know if I've necessarily felt that before. Um, but it stands to reason that it's, it's worth it to do it because it's, it's science, man. <laughs> so, um, what I try to do with a build is spend a little bit of time just really thinking about um, how I can position the ESC and the flight controller to use as much of the available space as possible, but to also leave enough space for uh, the wires that we're going to have possibly passing in between the boards and anything else that we've got going on. So 
I've got this uh, ESC mounted in a way that the um, uh, the plug header uh, with the motor signal wires is on the bottom, and for most people that's upside down. But again, it, I mean on, on ESC it really doesn't matter. ESC really doesn't care which direction it's in because it doesn't even have a gyro on it. Um, but I did that to save that space. That plug header is big, and the way that this frame is, there was some wasted space under here because of the grommets. Um, so it was a perfect, uh, it's kind of a perfect fit to, to put that plug facing downward. So that gives the top of the ESC a nice flat surface to mate to the, uh, to mate up to the, um, to the flight controller. If I hadn't done that, if that plug header was facing upwards, what I'll usually do is try to take the biggest obstruction on the flight controller and like put that opposite of it. Um, so like I might put this plug header over here or something like that. It's, it's just one of those things, you know, you put, the, you put the flight controller on, you look at it from the side like this, you say, okay, well that's coming close, that's coming close, let me try it a different way. And, and you just sit here and try it all the different ways um, until you can find uh, the, the best sort of way to, to, to sit it in here. The other thing that I think about is where the VTX and camera pads are. I always try to get the VTX pads in the back, and if the flight controller is set up this way, uh, the, the camera pads in the front. And what that's going to do is, it's going to prevent you from having to run video wires across the ESC. And the ESCs, and, and namely the battery leads, are very noisy. And, the, and that's one of the other big problems on micros, is that um, you can get really dirty video. Uh, the, the micro components don't have enough space for many capacitors. You know, we can only see two capacitors on this guy, uh, two of the full-size ones. There's a bunch of other small ones here. Um, but that's a, that's a pretty common problem on micros is to have noisy video. Um, so again, you know, kind of taking these things all into consideration and not just going, oh, it's going to be fine this way, bah, 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 solder, solder, solder. You know, take the extra 10 minutes and just kind of think your build out. Look at where the wires are going to go um, because down the road you're going to have a cleaner build that's easier to maintain and potentially has, uh, you know, a cleaner video with less noise. Uh, all kinds of benefits to doing it this way. So let's do that right now. I mentioned how you know you can rotate this in four directions, but two of those directions are kind of stupid for a flight controller. That's because of the USB port. I don't ever put the USB port facing backwards or forwards because it becomes very, very difficult to get your, uh, your USB plugged into your computer uh, to do updates and, and stuff like that. So I always try to point the uh, USB out the side in one direction or the other. Now, with the Acrobrat frame, we've got another fairly specific kind of thing in that it's got vertical carbon here with uh, uh, vibration damping grommets in it. And what Tommy designed is an old school setup which is called clean and dirty. The clean plate is up here. The clean plate holds uh, both cameras and the battery and the idea is if this plate has none of the none of the, the objects that vibrate on it um, we've got these rubber grommets so the clean plate can just kind of cruise along nice and smooth while the dirty plate is down here with all the vibrators on it the four our, our four uh, vibrators shaking like mad um, so your camera is going to get a much, you know, a, a much more jello-free feed, uh, but here is the problem with that. This plate moves, and if you look here, I don't have it pushed down all the way, but um, if you look here, the clean plate gets kind of close to the flight controller, and what a few of us prototype testers had happened is on a really hard crash, we had put our um, USB ports facing upwards, as we normally do in most of our builds, um, and what happened is on a really hard hit, the clean plate will actually slam downwards, and it, and it, crushed, the, uh, and it crushed the USB ports. So the, <laughs> the super simple fix that we came up with was to flip it upside down and put the USB port on the bottom. So now the top of your flight controller is free of anything that's sticking up, and now this clean plate has plenty of room to move up and down um, and uh, you don't have to worry about bashing your your USB port which it sucks when when you smash a USB port it's it's super annoying um, it's not the end of the world because we can do everything through the OSD 
Um, but you know, at that point, you kind of can't do any more firmware updates. So again, we need to uh, put the USB port on the bottom, in this case, since it's this frame, uh, and we also need to pick. Is it going to face this way, or is it going to face that way? So um, again, I'm going to take a real quick look at where the video pads are. So it looks like, you know, I need to pull up a... Um, how much space between the clean plate and the FC, asks Ty. Um, as long as you have a couple millimeters and nothing hanging out big, it, Tommy does have it set up where it, it shouldn't actually overlap. It only hit the USB port because the USB port hangs out the side of the board itself. If you don't have the USB port there, you actually have clearance. There is clearance there, Clarence. Um, so you, you should be fine so long as that USB port is facing downwards. I've, I've never had another problem with it, and I've had... I mean, we, I've had a prototype Acrobat for over a year, and I mean, I've had a million different variations of it, um, and I've only ever had it happen that one time. Even the, even the plug header here, although you would want to keep in mind that the actual plug from the ESC is going to stick out a little bit from it, right? So you would, you would want to kind of look at that. But uh, the, the big problem is the, uh, the USB port. So, who's calling a lawyer? What? Dougie got arrested for flying a tiny whoop. What do I do now, he says. Ask the cop what in the hell his deal is. That's ridiculous. Um, I don't even know what to tell you, brother. Sorry, that's that blows. Um, let me pull up the, the wiring diagram on this guy. Um, I'll drop the Patreon link again since I'm about to lose it. Uh, hopefully it stays on screen long enough to, uh, to get it back. You guys want to watch me type? That would be just enthralling, I'm sure. Oh my god, everything's falling! Uh, so we want to go Talon F7 uh, MPU 6000. Alright. Fantastic. <laughs> yeah, right, Jonathan? Okay, cool. So, the reason I wanted to do this... I'll point you guys upwards. We'll do it together. We'll do it together, everybody. Um, the reason why is, again, I want to look at where the, the camera and the VTX feed into. Um, so on this drawing, we've got the camera up on top here. And then where is the VTX? There's the VTX. See? So this is what I'm talking about. I, this is one of the many reasons that I love the Talon board. They've got the camera inputs and power up on one side of the board and then they've got the VTX on the other side. So we're not gonna have to run any video wires along the length of the flight controller or the uh, ESC. Uh, ZDK asks, are you gonna go with Betaflight 4.1? Yes, I already put it onto um, uh, my uh, current three inch setup. And I'm not gonna do RPM filtering quite yet though. I'm, I'm gonna wait until that RPM filtering is a little bit uh, more tested is the word that I'm groping for. All right, good deal. So uh, from that, if I rotate it like this, that means the camera is here. Okay, so, oh yeah, CS for camera signal. All right, so I wanna put that up front. That kind of makes this a nice easy decision, um, but I, I do wanna talk through one more uh, consideration. So th in this orientate, oh, I gotta, Hold on, I gotta hook you guys up. Okay, good. So, putting it this way, Jesus, come on. Putting it this way, I'm gonna have my camera pads in the front. Um, that's gonna allow me to hook it up to my FPV camera right here, nice and simple. Um, and then I've got my VTX pads in the back. Here are my VTX wires. Um, Previously, those were running up front, so they're a little bit longer. Um, I might cut them. We'll talk about that in, in a little while, Why, when, when you do and don't want to cut. Um, the other thing that I always keep in mind when I'm figuring this out is where the, uh, the pin header is going to be for the ESC. Uh, because sometimes you just won't have a little breakout cable here that's long enough. Uh, and this is one of those cases. Luckily, this plug header is facing backwards, but if for some reason Talon had had this, uh, the plug header on the front of this thing, 
I would have to either build a longer cable um, from uh, RDQ sells a little cable kit where you can actually build these. It comes with the wires and a million of the different plugs and you can build your own cables. Um, if you don't have that kit, then you can just set it up so that the plug header is, is in a spot where it can actually reach uh, to the, uh, the, the, the cable that's coming up from the ESC with the signal and the power. Um, but, like I said, in this case we got lucky, the plug header is on the back. The next thing that I want to check is making sure that, um, so I had the Talon F4 on here, um, I need to make sure that the, uh, the, the, the pinout from the ESC is the same as the pinout on the flight controller. And so to do that, you can either just look at the colors, that's the, the easiest way to do it, sometimes you can't do it that way, you need to pull up the, uh, the wiring diagram for the, um, uh, for the uh, ESC and trace from the, the plug header what each pin is, signal one, two, three, four, current sensor, uh, possibly telemetry, VBAT, ground, all that good stuff. Um, but in this case, we're color-coded, so that's fine. The, the motor wires aren't color-coded, but I actually don't care. Uh, I'm, I, I almost always have to reassign resources in Betaflight and the CLI. It's very easy to do. It only takes a couple minutes, so um, we're not going to sweat it. Uh, so, But in this case, again, what I do need to make sure is that this cable is going to feed the right uh, the, the right things into the right pins on this uh, F7 flight controller. So on my other screen I still have that um, wiring diagram pulled up and so from left to right we've got VBAT, ground, RX5 for telemetry and then we've got current and then we've got motor 4321. So now I'm going to look at where the pins are in here. The pins are on the top so I'm going to take my little cable, I'm going to put the pins upwards in the same orientation that it's going to plug in, and I'm going to look here. So I've got red for VBAT, so we're good there, and then I've got ground, black for ground next to that, we're good. I have two blanks, because this ESC is just BL Heli S, it does not have um, telemetry because it doesn't have because it's not 32-bit. Uh, this ESC also does not have a current sensor, shame on you. Hobby wing. Um, although I don't know if any of the, the mini ones have current sensors. Um, but I, I've never been super thrilled with this ESC. Whatever. It's another story for another day. Uh, and then it's motor 4321. So we're good. This, uh, this plug is going to interface properly with this plug header. If it wasn't, if we got that wrong and that uh, the, the VBAT or probably even the ground were on the wrong pin, they would more than likely cook this flight controller as soon as we plugged it in. Um, because if you're sending 4S VBAT into a motor signal pad, um, it is just not wanting to deal with that. <laughs> um, so that's going to be a, uh, a, a quick, that's going to be a quick trip to uh, hell. I don't know. I don't know where I was going with that. Private Island loves the detail I go into. Thank you, man. Um, not in a hurry to slap it together and get it finished. It's really important. I, I really... I can't stress enough that with micros you cannot slam them together. They will not fly right. The the flight controller will not be soft mounted enough. Um, it, it'll it's just a nightmare. I've done it. I've tried it. It just does not work. Um, so just take your time. It takes longer to build the micros anyway because everything is so goddamn small and you're like, <laughs> um, so just <laughs> just embrace it and and build slow. So now we know what orientation our flight controller is going to be in. Uh, Ty K, great question. What would you do if the pinout didn't match? Um, absolutely fantastic question. If I didn't have a kit where I could build a new uh, little plug header here, I, what the hell is this called? What do you guys call this? What do you guys call this little shit brick that goes in between the ESC and the and the flight controller? Is it the... the this is the plug header. I, th I think this is considered a plug header. Harness. That's a good word for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good one, Noah. Yeah, harness. Um, wiring harness. Even better. Cool. Um, so if you had to make this wiring harness work, you'll notice that there are two sides. One side is just flat white plastic, 
but the other side is where all the action is happening. So the other side, if we looked at this real close, um, the uh, it's they're metal pins inside of little plastic latches. I gotta kind of do this with my hand. Um, so okay, so that's the that's the plug header that we were just looking at, right? And this is the top that we were just looking at. Bing, 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 bing. It's got all those little metal bastards. Um, there are so. If the wires, okay, if the wires are coming out this way, um, there are these little plastic latches, and yeah, <laughs> fuck you, Ty. <laughs> there, there are all these little plastic latches, um, and then the metal bastards in there have like a little hook on them, and that's why they don't, they don't come out because they hit the little. Um, the little flip flabs and the and the schleem and the flip flob. Um, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna go in there with either an exacto knife or a really tiny little sharp set of pliers. And how was I doing it? This is the thing. And you're gonna lift up on those little plastic chip bricks. Um, and when you, it's really hard to do. It's really annoying. I, it really drives me insane. You got to do it super carefully because if you lift them up that much, they're gonna break and then you're doomed. Um, so you just like lift it up the tiniest little bit and then you're just gonna, with like, you're gonna do this little, this little like thing with your hands and cause you gotta like, you gotta hold this, but then you gotta hold the tool, but then you gotta pull on the wire too. Like it's just, it, it's just the goddamn worst. Um, spend the like $8 on RDQ. They have a little kit. Um, so that you're only dealing with pushing them in. Getting them out is a pain in the ass, but you can totally do it. Just be super gentle. Um, one of the things that will definitely save you if you have to do this, because you're going to have to do this at some point. Um, Naked Pilot says it's really not that bad. Give me this secret then, because it's a, it, I hate it. It, it. I guess it kind of isn't that bad after a while. But um, one of the things that will get you, if you're pulling on the wire, that little metal guy is pulling into the plastic thing so it's going to be really hard to to lift the uh the plastic thing up so you got to kind of push the wire in first and then you got to lift up on the little plastic guy and then you got to pull the wire out um you'll have to do it at some point you'll figure it out it's annoying as hell um but just keep in mind that those little little plastic nubby things are Oh, well, that sucks, Joe Ryan. Joe Ryan bought the RDQ kit and more than half were... Oh, no, so Joe Ryan, that's not what it is. Half of them, there, there's two different sizes of... Um, there's two different sizes of these connectors, man. Uh, and half of them are for the bigger ones and half of them are for the smaller ones. So that's what's going on. Um, I keep them separated here. I can't possibly imagine a world where the camera will uh, focus on this, but we'll try it anyway. Um, here are the two different sizes. The, the difference is annoyingly small, but um, if, if you look real carefully, you can see. See the size of the pins? So that's what's going on, Joe, in your kit. You've got half. Um, I used to know the name of them. They're, they're like some kind of JST connectors. Uh, there you go. People in the chat are, uh, are hooking me up. So now the question is, which box... Did which one come from? Okay, now we're good. Yeah, the, the oh God, the fact that they use two different sizes is, is is infuriating beyond the bounds of rational thought. And like, and and what's really annoying is like, like Run Cam will use one size, and then, um, and then Fox Deer will use another size. I'm like, man, we it's this hobby is like such a perfect example of why standardization is so important. Um, because not having it leads to you thinking that RDQ sent you garbage, and you know you're more than uh, than. Never mind. <laughs> That's a tangent that um, <laughs> I can't go down. Uh, night to be. So that's where we're at. Let's start soldering, as the Brits say. Who caught the uh, the British stream? 
yesterday. Anybody? Um, so let's talk about cutting the wires short. The uh, you can see so pluses are going to be that you can save some weight. Uh, it's a cleaner build. Uh, big minus is going to be that if you ever have to switch the flight controller, um, the uh, the pads might be on the opposite side, and the and the the wires might not be long enough anymore. As much as I, I as I want to cut these things short so that they're they're just the perfect length and I save a gram or two, uh, I switch components enough where I'm not going to do that. Uh, I am going to leave these the length that they are. I have cut these kind of specifically so that they're just long enough to reach the back, the the opposite side of the board. Right, that's pretty much all you'll ever need them to reach is the other side of the flight controller. Um, so I'm going to leave them like that so long as they don't cause any issues with like too many. Sometimes if you have too many wires up in here, they can all kind of bunch up and you won't be able to fit. Um, you won't be able to fit all the components down nice and flush. Um, Private Island says some of the wires have uh, one size on one end and one size on the other end. Yeah, that's that's super fun, Private Island, when it's the big on one side and the small on the other side. Oh, my God. Uh, so, yeah, let's just get after it. Uh, I just kicked the soldering iron on. Um, the only... So, with the, uh, the Talon board, they've got pads on both sides. Um, so, I tend to just, like, sit it up here on the tops of the uh, the standoff so I can kind of solder to it. Um, the only thing to be careful of when you're doing that is make sure no solder balls go anywhere that you don't want them to go. Just keep your eye on it. You can see the solder balls when they happen. Don't ignore it. If you see like a little explosion, get your loop back out and look for any solder ball that might have uh, jacked your, your stuff up. Um, so what I want to do is I'm going to solder everything that needs to go to the bottom first um, and then I'll be able to flip it over Wait, no. Okay, I want it like this. Yeah. I'm going to solder to this side first, and then I'm going to flip it over for the install, and then I'll solder whatever needs to go on this side second. So um, let's get going. All right, so wiring diagram says on the top is going to be the camera, the receiver, and the VTX. So I might not have to solder anything to the bottom because I think S-Bus is on top. All right, well that works. So uh, yeah, let's do some work. So now is when I'm gonna pretty much ignore the chat. I still love you guys, I swear, but uh, for people with eyes, something has to be visually happening or they're gonna punch me in my mouth, rightfully so. So let's get a little bit of work done. Plus, I, I, I do need to get some of this stuff done. Um, let's move some things out of the way here, just so that it's not quite so much of a hot mess. And this is a flux pen. If you do not have one, go buy one tonight uh, from Amazon. I'm pretty sure if you type in flux pen to Amazon, uh, this is the, the first search result. Um, flux allows heat to transfer very quickly and efficiently from the tip of the soldering iron to the pad or the wire that you're working on and that is important. The quicker you can get in and get out on these pads, the less heat will spread to the rest of the board and cause havoc and mayhem and destruction. Um, so what I'm going to do first is tin all of the pads that I'm going to be using and I am getting older so my eyesight is failing and I need to pull the wiring diagram a little closer for myself. Uh, so we've got cam plus, minus, and signal and then we've got uh, TX3, RX3, 5 volt, and ground. Alright, so the question becomes what's inverted? Some of these guys will put, they'll name uh, one of the pads SBUS and that is the inverted pad, but Talon didn't do that, but they have a really nice little section here where they talk about um, like like best uh, best practices, where to wire this stuff. It's probably the the um, the RX3. 
but let's just double check. Uh, five full yards. No. Well, they don't specifically call it out in the little text section, but in the image, in the wiring diagram image, they literally have a picture of an RXSR, uh, which needs inverted uh, S-Bus, and they have the, the wiring diagram showing that over to the RX3 pad. So pretty much guaranteed that that's gonna be the, the inverted pad that we want. Um, so we want camera plus, camera minus, camera signal, we're gonna skip T3, hop on over. Actually, no, we're not gonna skip T3 because that's, no, we're not gonna, what am I saying? We can't use that for telemetry. Um, we're gonna go RX3, five volt, and ground. So we're gonna tin those guys because that's what we need for our FPV camera and our RXSR receiver. And then while I'm at it, I'm gonna to come to the back here and Actually, I'll do the back separately because I have to look up. We'll talk about it in a second. So let's just tin these pads real quick here. Oh, you're right, Naked Pilot. It's F7, so it doesn't matter. Noah called it too. Oh my god, is that nice. Oh boy, I totally forgot about that. that so that's why they don't have it called out, because it doesn't matter anymore. Oh my god. For anybody not uh, keeping up with, with what we're talking about here, um, the whole inverted, uninverted thing was only an issue on F4 uh, uh, pro, uh, flight controllers. Now that we're F7, or if you go back far enough to F3, um, it was not an issue. It's not something that you have to think about. And uh, that is terrific. Oh man, that is so nice to not have to worry about that anymore. God, I totally forgot about that. That's such like a nice little hidden benefit of, uh, of F7. And again, we're being as quick as we can within reason. No reason to, to half-ass it because we were rushing so much. We do need to make sure that the pad heats up enough. Uh, but with the flux on there, that happens pretty quickly. And there's also flux in the solder, uh, which helps that heat transfer as well. Essentially, if there is smoke, and, and I have like 18 fans on right now to try to keep this room that I'm in cool, um, so the smoke just disappears immediately, but if you can see smoke coming off your soldering iron tip, that means that you, um, that you have flux. As soon as it stops smoking, all of the, the smoke is the flux burning off. The flux is basically just petroleum. Um, so as soon as it stops smoking, you no longer have any flux. If you're almost done, you can kind of, you're going to sort of be okay. If you're having trouble at that point, put, come off of it, let it cool down for 30 seconds, and then go back in with some flux on the tip of the iron, on the pad, on the, you know, whatever you're, uh, whatever you're working on. So there we go. Those guys are pinned now, or tinned rather. Now we're going to talk about these back pads. Um, so we've got uh, VTX. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. We'll handle it. We'll handle the telemetry from the RXSR. Um, it's actually going to go on the other side of the flight controller. So we'll, when we get there, we'll talk more about that. Uh, back of the flight controller, we've got VTX signal. We've got VTX plus, VTX ground. And then what do we have here? We've got uh, TX1, RX1, and then another 5 volt and ground. So this build is a little different. We've got a run cam split mini, which needs uh, a VBAT voltage. We've then got a separate FPV cam, which can take anything. Um, I'm going to feed this FPV cam 5 volt, if you were keeping track a second ago. That's why I tinned the uh, camera plus and minus pads up here. So the camera is fine. We've got everything we need for the camera up front. This is good. Um, we need to make sure that we get the run cam VBAT. And, um, well, not end. The, we've also got a VTX, and this is a Pro 32 by TBS. Pro 32 Mini or Nano, I forget what they call it. Um, this is a 5 volt only VTX. That's important. Um, and then we've also got the receiver, which uh, we're going to be powering 
from the 5 volt and ground up here next to the R3. Uh, so we can only feed our VTX 5 volt. What happens sometimes is the VTX power pads will be um, uh, VBAT. Uh, that happens more often than you'll think. What Talon did is they give us these three little pads here and so basically as it sits right now it will not put any voltage to the VTX pads because these three pads are not bridged, they're not connected. These three pads are, oh, the very far left one says 5 volt, um, the middle one doesn't say anything, and then the far right one says VBAT. So basically the way it works is we're going to bridge two of these pads together with, with a little blob of solder uh, and that's going to determine how much voltage goes to the VTX pad, the VTX power pad. It's either going to be 5 volt or it's going to be v, uh, VBAT. In our case, since there's no other pads on this flight controller that will provide VBAT, we actually have to use this VBAT for the RunCam splits power. So the RunCam split um, power leads are going to go all the way back here to the VTX power pads and we're going to bridge the middle pad with the VBAT pad. This is how we're going to push full voltage into the RunCam split and then Talon was cool enough to give us an extra 5 volt and ground pad right back here and that's what we're going to use to power the Pro32 VTX. Um, Aztec Joe with an awesome question, you beat me to the punch. If I install my RunCam Split Mini 2, um, will the, oh I thought you were asking a different question. Will the prop show up in the video? Probably most frames will show a little bit of prop in view, most, most micro frames. There are ones out there that won't, such as the, uh, the one that comes to mind is the X-Hover B-Roll. That is a dead cat design with the front motors pulled in so that you don't get any uh, prop in the in the FPV cam or in the, the run cam split. What I thought you were going to ask is um, how you would see if the uh, run cam split was recording. So previously I had it set up with a little switch um, and I had the video from the split going to the switch, I had the video from the FPV cam going to the switch and the output of the switch went to the video in on the flight controller. So I could just toggle between the two. What I found is it's just one more thing to fail, one more thing hanging off the side of this thing. Um, so what I've chosen to do now, and, and I also, I don't need to see what the run cam sees other than when I change quality settings, and I really don't change the quality settings. I leave it at 720, um, 60, or no, not 720, uh, 1080, 60 all the time. Um, so I just set it and let it go. So what I'm doing now is, I wired up just a video, um, so I found a female connector that matches up with the um, uh, with with Runcam's connector that plugs into their FPV cam, and then I found a, the female one and I put that on the video lead for the Runcam split. So what I can do is, if I ever need to look at the the Runcam split video, oh, you know when else you have to do it. You have to do it when uh, when you screw up the lens and you need to refocus the lens. That's actually kind of important. You, you do have to set up a way to look at this thing at some point. Um, so yeah, I just put the female lead. So now if I need to look at the run cam, I can unplug from the, the run cam Sparrow 2. And then this plug will plug directly in here. And, now, and, and the other end of this plug is feeding into the video in on the flight controller. So I can quickly and, and relatively easily plug in the split focus the camera, change the, the uh, video settings if I need to, and then unplug it, plug my FPV cam back in, and now I have a good quality um, FPV feed that is much more comfortable to fly through than the Split Mini. So, I think that covers everything that I'm gonna do. Um, let's tin these back pads, and we'll start dropping some wires down. So we need video signal pad here, we need um, VTX plus, VTX minus, we need 5 volt and ground, and we also need to send, um, it is a smart audio VTX, so we're also going to use um, these uh, UART1 pads here, and so we need to tell 
the flight controller what to do, so we're going to use the T, the transmit, T1 uh, pad, because we want the flight controller to tell the uh, VTX what channel it wants it to go on. Aztec Joe had to replace the round cam split mini cable twice already. What do you do? Why? why? Um, the only tips I can give you, uh, look up Tommy's Oh My God video. He shows you how to do this, but basically, if it's breaking in here, you probably don't know where it's breaking, it's just breaking, but um, we found early on in the, in the prototype testing last year that if you unscrew the back of the split mini, um, you'll see where the, the ribbon cable plugs in. Put a big blob of hot glue in there and then as quickly as you can cram this cover back on and screw it down that what you want is for the hot glue to kind of ooze out a little bit and it's going to do two things it's going to keep that thing plugged in there um, and it also seems to kind of reinforce the ribbon cable i've never had one die on me um, so yeah how much weight is added running two separate cameras just that right if i if i flew through the split Everything here would be exactly the same other than this. So um, this is a discontinued camera. Um, this is the uh, Runcam Sparrow 2. Uh, they discontinued it, I believe, because <laughs> they went like super minimal on the camera case itself, which I applaud them for, but it's very fragile. Um, the the Runcam Racer, now it's called, now it's the Runcam Racer 2, is this exact same camera. It's almost the same weight, but it has a full, uh, a full body on it, so it's much, uh, much more resilient. So there you go. There's your weight penalty, 5.1 grams, which I will, I will take a 5.1 gram weight penalty for a proper FPV cam all day, every day. The, uh, the Run Cam Split Mini and all of the HD cams um, that just have a single lens on them just suck to fly through. Um, you, you like, at first you trick yourself into thinking it's not too bad, and then when you when you put a proper FPV cam and you fly it, you go, oh my god, why did I wait so long to do that? All right, let's get some tinning done here. So a couple other soldering tips for you guys. Um, your right hand and the soldering iron, if you're right-handed, uh, their job is to provide heat. Their job is not to move wires around, to hold wires down, um, to do really much of anything other than provide heat. So when you're tinning, the tip of the soldering iron is going to go down on the pad because you want to get heat into the pad. And then you try to push the solder onto the pad a lot of times you hit the corner of the pad and the iron, and that's fine, um, but ideally you want to push the solder directly into the pad because that makes sure that the pad is hot enough. Um, Aztec Joe, that's cool that you got used to it, man. I, I just, I can't do it. The, the big problem I have is the uh, field of view. The field of view on the, uh, on the split mini, the Foxier Mix, the, the Turtle, is way too narrow for me. I fly a very wide field of view, 160, 170, 175, um, and that just kills me with these run cams. They have like a 140 degree field of view, um, and I, I just, I, I have no, I have like no spatial awareness when, when the, the field of view is, is that narrow. It's just so zoomed in, I feel like I'm looking through a periscope. Um, but to each his or her own, I would love to be able to fly through this and save the five grams. I mean, yes, five grams is not a lot, but Five grams is five grams, yo. So, now, we can start soldering wires down. And when I'm doing, pulled these wires off, I was probably doing it on stream, and I try not to be so painstakingly, um, perfectionist, OCD, whatever you want to call it, when I'm on the stream, which is good practice. I mean, there, there's doing it right, and then there's being insane, and I am definitely on the being insane side of, of that uh, equation, but, you know, it's 
gorgeous when it's done, and it works a long time, and it doesn't fall apart in the air, so it's not all bad, it just takes forever. Um, and I'm sure it'd be super boring. For you guys to watch, yeah, run cam hybrid is the answer. That is going to uh, change some things and make some um, some micro setups HD capable that can do some wild, wild stuff. Why does my screen keep blacking out so often? If I change the energy settings, it's going to do it every 10 minutes. I'm going to pull my hair out in a second, guys. You're going to have to look at my inner elbow. Display sleep. 15 minutes? Really? Oh, my God. I can't believe that was 15 minutes. All right. One minute to an hour. Uh, okay. Camera leads. Camera plus. Camera minus. Camera signal. Uh, I'm going to solder left to right because I'm right-handed. If I soldered right to left, I would be heating up the solder joint every time I jumped one to the left. So try to work like this away from your, um, ooh, okay, all right, so this is, um, this is another super secret little tip, to avoid video noise, who's that, oh, um, to avoid video noise, put your FPV camera ground on the same ground as your VTX, so I'm going to put my VTX back here, uh, my VTX ground back here. Oh, I could do it one of two ways. I could put my VTX ground up here and my camera ground up here as well, or I could put them both back here. Um, I am going to put, since I already have it cut this way, I'm going to put my camera ground in the back on the VTX ground. It does mean that you need to put two wires on the same pad, which is kind of a pain in the ass, but uh, you'll get it and it's worth it. And so I'm going to do that from underneath. Uh, actually, no, I'm not. So most of the, more often than not, on a normal build, I try to keep the wires away from this area because there's a battery strap, and I don't want the battery strap to catch the wires and rip them off the pads. Um, but on the Acrobrat, Tommy has it set up a little bit different, and we, we don't have any battery straps up here. So I'll actually just run this on top here um, out of ease of use, ease of, I don't know, words, ease of words, all right, let's get it, uh, I will say, the only negative that I've found on this Talon board is that the pads are very small, um, that is the case with all 20 by 20 flight controllers. Um, the difference with this one is there are a lot of pads, uh, which is good. I would rather have a lot of pads, a lot of UARTs, uh, and have them be a little bit small and just have to solder better. But fair warning, if it's your first build, it is going to be... Um, I'll put it this way. <laughs> if it's your first build, and you can build one of these things, everything you do from that point on is gonna be easy, especially building a five inch rig. Um, it is just going to be absolutely so simple um, because you're essentially sort of like swinging with a weighted bat if you're into baseball or know anything about baseball. All right, so there we go. And now we want so um, and on along those lines, I actually didn't need to tin that uh, camera negative pad. Uh, I'm gonna point these forward because that's the way that they're going. You'll notice that I pointed this ground in towards the inside of the flight controller because that's the direction of travel from the wire. If you just point them all out and then you have to 180 degree one of the wires, it's just going to put stress on the wires. There's no reason to do that. Um, so there you go. Let's get a little bit of this in here for my old friend. Oh, this is me being super insane. Hold on, let me just be super insane for a second, guys. Don't, uh, don't, don't pay attention to this. This is, this is me being crazy. Okay. 
Done being crazy. If you don't have a nice, fine-tipped pair of tweezers, um, open a new tab and go to Amazon and buy them now. Um, if you're going to be working on micros, you need a good, fine-tipped pair of tweezers. You don't have to spend a lot of money. Um, they just have to have really needle-nosed little tiny tips. They are a necessity. Okay, and I think, yeah, I got this turned up a little too hot. I thought that melted awful quick. Uh, and I'm, so I'm also skipping steps here, like I should be tinning uh, the tip of the soldering iron, um, but I've done this enough that with a tiny little 30 gauge wire, you can actually just get in, get in and get out and get a perfectly good solder joint. But if you're new, don't skip steps. If you're new, um, do it right. Tin everything, flux everything, because my God, it just gets so goddamn frustrating when you're new. Um, and especially like with, with soldering, you can just wreck stuff. So do it right, spend the extra time. Um, until you've done this a hundred times, it's going to be a lot faster to do it right the first time um, than have to come back and screw up and get angry and burn your fingers and stab your significant other out of frustration. <laughs> so there we go. FPV cam is done. Now let's do the uh, receiver. So again, we've got R3. 5 volt and ground, and here's our RXSR wires. Uh, we're gonna go. I might actually go in between with these. I have the space to go in between. So, the other thing I try not to do, like. Yeah, I don't know. If I go under. Yeah, I'll go under it. Um, here's the thing we want to remember though, uh, we are going to flip this flight controller when we're done. So we got to pay a little attention to where, what's going to happen when we, when we flip this, right? We're going to flip it like that, um, to get the, uh, to get the USB facing downwards. So those pads are going to go to that side. So like, yeah, we're going to run them. Sh we're actually going to run them directly to it. Oh yeah, that's funny. So I, I, <laughs> yeah, so this is now on the inside too. I, I, I lost track of that, right? So I, I put this, what I said was going to be on top. Um, when I said that, I forgot that we're going to flip it. So it is actually in between, but that's fine. doesn't matter, whatever. Um, yeah, I'm going to do it like that because there is enough room Yep, that'll be fine. So I'm going to flip this back over and I'm going to solder these down like that because then when we flip it, they'll be underneath and it'll be nice and uh, squeaky clean. The other option being, basically, I run them over top and then drop them down, which is not a terrible idea. Eh, we'll do it this way, whatever. It'll be fine. So we've got four. We've got um, an S-Bus. We've got a telemetry, uh, power, and ground. I always forget if it's the yellow or if it's the green that are S-Bus. I think it's the green. R access R wiring. And yes, it is the green. Green is S bus out. Um, so to these pads, I need green, black, red. Uh, and then this yellow is the telemetry. We need to find another UART for that. Uh, and that's what we're going to use the T1 in the back here for. Uh, so I'm going to un untwist it from the, the twisty niblets. 
Uh, and then I'll, I'll actually probably cut this down a little bit and then just pop it onto there once we start soldering to the back. Um, I, the, the whole twisted pairs thing, from what my father has told me, doesn't do anything in the real world. Um, I twist them together like this just so that it's a little bit neater um, and just so that they're held together. Um, you don't have to do it. If you don't like it, don't do it. So, what do we got all the way off on the left there? Uh, we need to put S-Bus on that. Let's get that done. It also kind of helps with, like, when I, you'll see, when I get this first one tacked down, the other ones will be, like, right there. And it just, I don't know, it just makes it easier. Just one of those things. Uh, using my ring finger on the left side to touch the flight controller to just steady my hand, uh, get a little bit of like bone support so that I'm not shaking on the pad. Um, I've also got my wrists down on the table. That also helps uh, with making sure that you're not shaking. Essentially, if you go to solder and you're shaking, there's a problem. Like you're, you're probably holding your arm up and trying to muscle it. Don't do that. If, if you're about to solder something and you're shaking, stop, figure out how you can not shake. Um, for me, it's just having bone support, having like bones touching the table, the desk, the, the quad in this case, just having some more points of uh, contact than, well, having points of contact, period, but having as many as you can will certainly help. And you also might notice that I pull off of the pad out rather than pulling straight up. Um, I do that because I, uh, if, like, when I don't have flux on the tip of the iron, like right now, um, the solder will want to come with the, uh, the soldering iron. So if you pull straight up, you'll get that little Hershey Kiss looking bastard on top. Um, whereas if you pull outwards, you won't get that. You'll just get this beautiful little um, rounded off uh, solder joint. Solder joint. Yeah, so see, now that that one's tacked down, because of the fact that they're all uh, twisted together, the, uh, the power wire is just like perfectly right here for me. Feed it over, hoop it down, and away we go. And one more, which is our ground. And so now this pad becomes difficult because of the, uh, the rubber grommet there. So I'm going to rotate. Um, always move the work to you. Don't do one of these things where you're... Um, rotate the work around so that you can have your hands in the, the normal place. <laughs> Naked. It'll, it'll always be solder for me. Um, just because it's way more fun, and it's spelled that way, and unlike aluminum, um, I will give it to the English folks on this one that it should be pronounced soldering rather than soldering. Plus, soldering sounds too much like sodomy. Yeah, I said it. I said it. Quick inspection because I think I didn't get quite enough solder on that last one, and sure enough, I did not. Let's just so we could do we could add a little bit more one of two ways. We could put the iron on it and try to add solder. What's going to happen potentially if I do that is the wire is going to try to pull off of that pad. Uh, what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to add solder to the tip of the iron. I'm going to turn the temperature down a little bit so that it doesn't burn the flux off right away. Um, and then I'm just going to touch this to that pad while I'm holding the pad with the tweezers just like I was a second ago and the solder is all going to conglomerate together and just hang out in a wonderful organic labio of loveliness. These are tiny pads so we don't want to add too much solder to the tip. Still smoking, just stop smoking, pull off the pad and I didn't add quite enough. So the other thing that's going to happen is, on a lot of soldering irons, 
and there we go, now we're good. On a lot of soldering irons, even if you add the solder to the very tip, um, it's gonna wanna move back a little bit. Solder travels towards the heat, and the heating element is down here, so if you put solder on the very, very, very tip, it's gonna start to pull down like you're seeing this one doing. There's nothing that you can do about that. Um, that is just the way it is. One of them things. Let me just check it one more time just to be sure. Yeah, that's plenty. So that's all that we're gonna do on this side. The next thing I do is give them all a nice firm tug because if they rip off now, I'm gonna be happy as they're not ripping off while I'm in the air. Uh, there is a school of thought that by doing that just there, I fatigued all of those solder joints and made them more, uh, you know, increased the possibility of them flying off in flight. I've always done it this way. This is the way my dad showed me how to do it and it's never bitten me in the ass. Uh, so I'm gonna to continue to do it this way uh, because quite frankly, it, it's, it's easy to have a cold solder joint. It's easy that when the solder is drying, uh, cooling, for you to just move a little bit and create a cold solder joint, and that'll pull right off. So I'd, I would rather um, do it this way and, and have a better feeling of it being stronger. So now, nah, I guess we still have to do the back ones. Yeah, we gotta do the back ones before we flip it. Um, so let's get this out of the way. And, all right, so we need power from uh, two, rather the run cam split mini. So this is where I wanna kind of, again, think about the fact that I'm gonna flip this over. When I flip it over, the pads are gonna go from one side to the other. Um, and I always wanna try to prevent all of these sets of wires from doing this uh, in between the two boards and, and stacking up. So I know that the power wires are on this side of the run cam. Um, and they're on this side of this flight controller, but again, when we when we flip the flight controller back over, um, they're going to reverse. So I just want to like kind of spec that out to see what it's going to cross over with. So it's going to cross over with these guys, but I can probably make the cross right up here. So it'll just like, yeah, that'll be totally fine. So if I put them like that, it's going to be perfect. Okay, so that's good. Uh, and I'm also going to route these wires forward again, like we were talking about a minute ago. Oh, and I also need to bridge the, uh, oh, that would have been so annoying. The first time I, I did a build with one of these flight controllers, I forgot to bridge them. Um, and when you forget to bridge them, it doesn't put any power <laughs> into that. And uh, then you got to pull them apart and bridge the stupid things. So I'm going to do that right now, and I am going to do it with flux because these pads are so close together that it's very easy um, to have the solder blob cover all three. So I tried to just flux uh, those two, but I know a little bit of it got on the 5-volt pad, but that's okay. We'll just be very careful here. So I'm going to heat this pad. I'm going to heat the, uh, the VBAT pad, and then I'm going to add... Some solder. And it's not cooperating. There we go. And so I'm just going to put the iron in between these two pads and pull straight up. And now, so that didn't do the Hershey Kiss because there was still flux. When there's still flux, it'll make a clean break and then the solder will um, kind of round itself out. And that's exactly what just happened. Later, Naked, wait, Naked Pilot, you leaving? Oh, no, Noah's leaving. Um, thanks for everything, as always, Noah. Hey, Noah, um, huge shout-out to Noah. Uh, he sent me, oh, it's plugged in. I don't know if I can unplug it. He sent me his extra Crossfire Micro, or Mini, whatever the hell it's called, um, um, uh, thing. What the fuck is this called? Module? Sure. Uh, he said this to me because he's not using it to get me up on Crossfire a little bit sooner than I thought. Um, huge thanks, brother. I really do appreciate that. He, and he did, the, ooh, 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 here we go. Here's a good, uh, segue. He did that via the secret Facebook groups that you'll get access to for the low, low price of 
at least $3 um, if you become a Patreon of mine. Uh, one of the perks is I have two hidden, secret, whatever, Facebook groups. One of them is called uh, Micro King's Castle with CID FPV. The other one is called uh, CID FPV Swap and Shop, I think. Two uh, tight-knit little communities of all of us freaks. Um, the, the Swap and Shop is cool because it's trusted people. You know, it's, it's not 10,000 people waiting to rip you off. Um, and, uh, yeah, so there you go. Uh, power. Okay. Let's feed some power to the Rencam split. Uh, before we do that, because of the fact that the video signal pad is all the way off on the side, I'm going to take care of the video signal, which I always put on yellow, and you should too. Yellow in the video world is just sort of like the color for your signal. Um, I'm going to run this, so when I flip this, I'm going to flip it that way. So I'm going to run this under Oh, and you know what? I don't... So I'm going to use this yeah, whatever. I'll talk about that later. I'm going to have to re rewrap this uh, yellow telemetry receiver wire and uh, you guys will see why in a bit. I thought I was going to use this pad back here for it, but uh, I, I'm using this pad back here for the uh, smart audio. That's totally fine. So we're going to get this video signal here. There we go. And now we're going to put the run cam split positive. Just separate these two a little bit. I hope you guys are having a good time in the chat because I am just completely ignoring it at this point. Um, but I will take a little break once I get these soldered down and uh, we can have a chat, my friends. I'm also kind of paying attention to, like, I'm putting these wires over this one. I fed, uh, I fed that video wire under the other one just because when I flip it, I don't want a big clusterfuck. Um, so yeah, we'll be fine. Is that, is, does anybody try to watch this like with kids? Do I need to try to not curse? I might not be able to, for the record. Um, I curse a lot. I don't curse a lot, but I am not good at not cursing. But if any of you guys have to like sneak watch this, any of you guys that have kids have to like sneak watch this with headphones or something, I am willing to try to not curse. Um, but you gotta let me know in the comments. Alright, so as always with ground pads, they're all connected, so they suck up a lot of heat. So I'm going to turn the iron up a little bit, and I'm going to... Oh yeah, it is late. Yeah. No, Private Island, I will not walk my fucking language. Um, yeah, that's true. Maybe on the, um, maybe on the European streams, since there are U.S. people... Um, on there and it's during the daytime maybe I'll try to not curse on that one alright so there we go now we've got the V-Bats hooked up to the run cam split mini um, I don't know yeah I, I, I detected the, uh, the sarcasm private <laughs> Griffin's got kids, oh boy, but they're asleep, that's good. So, there we go with that, let's just keep mangling here, let's just keep blasting through uh, wires before we take the break. Uh, I want smart audio here on T1, so let's do that real quick. Just cleaning up the... Uh, Clean up the wire there. I didn't get it super clean when I was uh, taking it off. Getting the little boogers off of it. Alright. 
Mm. How can I get this? There we go. That's going to be better. Ah, that's what we needed. We'll clean this up a little more, even. That's the ticket. That's the stuff. flat enough. Let's get that a little bit better. Yeah. I like that a little bit better. Uh, and then we've got a 5 volt in the ground and those are going to power the uh, VTX which we have over here because again it is only a 5 volt VTX. So now I need to pick Top or bottom, I rotate it this way. I want to go under, under this. And that will be less of a wiring mess. And you'll notice that I am leaving these wires all along. Um, hopefully, I won't have noise issues. If I do, I will shorten them up at that point. Uh, but I'm, I'm going to leave them long for right now. Partly because I just want to rip through this because um, I, I do want to get over to the uh, the 6S build. I really do. I, I might be flying with uh, steel tomorrow and I would love to have that rig put together because he's one of the main fucking people around here that pushed me into, uh, into going 6S. <laughs> so if I don't like it, it'll be nice to be able to say idiot you're wrong <laughs> but I'm sure that he's not wrong so this is an interesting one I'm gonna do this a little different I'm gonna do the ground first because it's a double uh, and then I'm gonna do the 5 volt and let's get a little, let's do this as right as we can because it is a pain in the ass to double these up Basically, the big pain is the one that's already soldered down is going to want to move around a lot of times. Um, if you have one of those multi-hand things, that can certainly help. Um, but those take a long time to like get set properly, and I just don't... It's never been... I've never been able to like, get it into my workflow here in a way that saves any time. Ah, there we go. Alright, so there's the 5 volt down. Let's just make sure that didn't come up. Yeah, it did come up. It made a little Hershey kiss. That's what, if, if you ever see me poking down with my index finger after a solder joint, that's what I'm feeling for. I'm feeling for a sharp point. Um, I, I just, I don't like those sharp points. There we go. I was able to pull off of the pad that time to prevent that from happening. And now I just need to get this... Um, Need to get this ground pad a little bit better here. Um, when it gets down, but I want to make sure it's really down. Oh, this is better. This is what I want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll do it from this side. What's nice is since it's, it's doubled up, it's now twice as high, so I'm not going to uh, touch the pad next to it. There we go. That is the stuff. All right, let's check it with the loop. Especially when you do these doubles. Always check these doubles. Because it's very easy to mess up the bottom one or for the bottom one to just kind of scooch around on you. Um, hmm. Actually, might go back in there. I don't... Oh, no, we're good. We're good. There it is. There it is. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's a nice smooth joint. And then that looks good. That's good. Good, good. And good. Okay, cool. 
Um, what's going on in the chat over there? Mm. see any uh, any unanswered crazy questions over there so I'm just going to press forth although I think that does it yeah so that does it for all the soldering on this side of the board um, we've got one more here that needs to go to a UART for the um, telemetry but first we're gonna make the flip so I set this up so that when I flip it like this, everything should be somewhat organized, I hope. So we're gonna flip it this way. And I'm just gonna be nice and gentle. Always be gentle with micros. These little tiny wires, the little strands in them can break very, very easily. Always, always, always kid gloves with, uh, with micro stuff. Alright, cool. And I do just want to route this a little differently here. Okay, perfect. Alright, so there we go. So let's see what kind of a jumble of wires we got underneath here. So we've got our power wire for the uh, run cam split. We're going to tuck that down as much as we can here. Okay, good. And then that crosses with the receiver setup. That's fine. Actually, I'll sort of fold that. Yeah, that's going to be even better. Okay. And that's pretty much it. This is pretty clean under here. So this is a this is a simple one. This is an easy one. This talon board is laid out really well. Some of these boards are laid out so stupid. Alright, so now we need to find... Oh, okay. So, I almost forgot. I'm going to rewrap this yellow telemetry wire into the, um, into the little bundle here. Because I'm going to wrap it around and hit one of these pads uh, for a UART. So, let's just do that real quick here. Just get it wrapped up. This is totally unnecessary, and this is full blown me being crazy. But um, suck it. <laughs> if you don't like it, suck it. All right, there we go. Get one more wrap on it just to make sure it's totally held together. Oh, it's actually a little short. Is it shorter than the others? No, it's the same length as the others. So, change of plans. I'm going to run this on the other side of the board. I'm going to run this. This is going to be the only wire on the top of the board. I'm going to run it just like that um, over the top there. And the reason I'm going to do that is otherwise it would pull the rest of this wiring weird-like uh, because it needs a little bit extra room. Uh, so this is this is actually going to be completely fine. Put this up here. We're going to run it right up on top, and just pop it right on there. It looks like I can wrap it one more time. Yeah, I'll wrap it one more time just to kind of keep it keep as much retention on it as possible. Clean builds, guys. Clean builds matter. All builds don't matter. Clean builds matter. All right, so that's what I'll do. Let's figure out which of these pads are. Um, a TX6. One, two, three, four. Four in from the left. Oh, no, no, no. We'll do TX2. TX2. All the way off from the side. So if that's on the bottom... Oh, yeah, it's perfect. TX2 is all over here. Yeah, I know, Ramon. It, it's, it is incredibly hard to get a camera that will... Um, what I'm going to try to do is get a um, get one of these arms that this guy is on. It's like a I don't know. Hopefully you can see it. Um, I would love to get one of these another one of these arms over here and put a webcam on it. 
and then that way I can pull the webcam here, I can take the webcam and, and face it straight down. The other problem you run into is like the camera gets in the way and like I, I won't be able to see what I'm doing. But, um, you know, I love you guys so much that so I'll make that sacrifice and, and I'll do it. I'll do my work through the the the, the stream. I'll, I'll do, it'll be like a challenge. Like how much stream delay can, uh, can Ciotti still solder with? <laughs> Seems like the worst challenge ever. Old lamp plus cable ties. Yeah, there's a there's probably a million things I could do, but um, you know, limited on space here, limited on time. Pad is tinned. Let's get this telemetry wired down. And again, I'm going to run it this way across the board because that's the direction of travel. That way, we don't have any kinks. Putting unnecessary stress on the little tiny wires inside of these guys. So what I was saying before about your right hand just applying heat, um, my left hand needs to manage this cable and everything it has to do with. So my left hand takes control of, um, needs to be in control rather, of holding the cable in the right spot and then also holding it down. If I use the tip of the soldering iron to hold this, uh, to hold this wire down, What's going to happen when I remove the soldering iron? The cable's going to want to move around and lift, and that's how you get solder joints. So, it, and, oh, perfect, the great timing. That's exactly what would have happened. The the wire had its own like little bit of tension. It slipped out of the tip of the uh, of the um, tweezers, and it went flinging off as soon as I removed the uh, the soldering iron. Thank you, telemetry wire, for proving my point. Now I got junk on the pad right next to it. Just move that out. All right, it's better. Let's try that again. Let's try holding the tweezers this way this time. Yeah, much better. Much, much better. Apply heat. Pull outwards. And hold with your left hand. 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000, 3, 1,000. And there we have it. Alright, feels good. Give it a quick look. Yep. Good enough. And we'll give it a tug. There we have it. Plug this guy in and we are all wired up. Alright, let's do some chatting. I also have some peanut butter cookies that my beautiful wife Kristen brought in. Um, let's see some questions, guys. Let's see some uh, some some life advice. Let's. Uh, what do you guys got for me? I need to take a little break. My eyes are killing me. Put you guys in the little stand here, and I'll put you over here. And let's get this a little bit more level. There we go. Custom workbench LED lamp. How, how old is that, Ty? I, uh, I watch everything on Tested. I, I've seen pretty much everything on Tested for the last year or so. I'm assuming it's older than that because um, Adam's got a lot of stuff on, uh, on his channel. If you guys don't know, now you know. Uh, if you guys don't know, when Mythbusters... Um, went off the air. Adam Savage created a, a YouTube channel called Tested, and you should all watch it. Whoop testing is good. It's real good. I was I flew a bunch of batteries today, actually. Uh, I'm playing around with the tune for those guys uh, to see if I can get like a really nasty uh, freestyle tune. <clears throat> All right, cookies. Mm. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Thank you, woman! Probably didn't hear what I said. She just heard screaming, so she's gonna run in. Awesome, Ramon's got a question. Ooh. 
I just said thank you. Oh. Told you. <laughs> Love you. Do the best. All right, Ramon asks, how do I hear my motors live during flight? Um, with a toothpick? I don't think you're going to be able to do it. Uh, with a toothpick? Hmm. Okay. Here's the only way to do it. i got to see if they even still sell it. UTX 03S, I think. No, no, it's not the S. It's the, it's the A. VTX 03A, I think. No, no, that's not it. There's an uh, Isheen makes a VTX that has audio in it. Uh, that's basically what you have to have. You have to have a VTX that sends audio. Um, so we're talking. Um, Immersion RC Tramp, which is way too big. Uh, 5 Volt Unify, way too big. HV Unify, way too big. Um, but Ishin used to make one, and I used to have them. Hmm. Ishin VTX. Let's see what they got. Um, the easiest way to spot it is there's a white wire. There's red, black, red, black, yellow, and white. Um, maybe it was a VTX 02? No, it was an 03. I bet you they don't make it anymore. Because I, I remember when they were selling them really cheap. Um... Ooh, hey, AKK Smart Audio, does it, Oliver, does it have uh, audio? Oh, look at that, there you go, Oliver's got your answer. Uh, fair warning, I've not had the best luck with AKK um, stuff in general. It, it's okay, it's not as good as Isheen, um, it's not the worst, it's somewhere in the middle. Um, but, uh, nice, AKK Smart Audio Stackable Backpack FPV Transmitter VTX, there you go. That's what you need. Uh, I saw another one roll in. Ty K, would you go up and down? Uh, oh, down. For, for me, yeah. So the... Uh, where is it? Here it is. So the... Um... <laughs> Come on. Look at this nice little case that it came in. Custom cut foam. Look at that, man. Isn't that cool? Uh, so, uh, Ty is referring to this, uh, prototype, uh, uh, brushless newbie drone whoop. And, um, the motors that it comes with are 0802 with 20,000 kV, uh, on one S. And I would actually go down. This has a lot of power, uh, for, for inside. I do live in a... Not a huge place, um, of like 1,200 or so square foot apartment. Um, so if, if you live in like a 10,000 square foot uh, mansion, this would be great. Christ, you might even want to go higher than that. But um, for this uh, for this apartment, I would actually rather drop down to like 17.5 or 18,000 kV, just so that I had a little bit more throttle resolution and a little bit more runtime. Um, but... I think these motors are the perfect, like, middle point. I, I think these are the best mix of something that you can fly inside and you can kind of sort of fly outside or just in a bigger inside space. Um, so, yeah, I, I would maybe, maybe, maybe go down to 18,000. Maybe not, though. Man, this, it just rips. It, it's, I'm really impressed by this. I really, really am. I, I really genuinely enjoy flying this. And uh, when I stop streaming, ooh, which is going to happen soon, 11.59, so I'm going to try to stop streaming when I, at the end of two hours more often. Um, yeah, we'll see. See how long that lasts. Another cookie. Um...
while I'm eating cookies, let's set up beta flight on the uh, 6S rig. Now that's a good idea. And, well, I didn't want to do that. I want to put you guys in this. Leave you in here and point you up at the screen. At some point I'll get OBS going. And this won't be so goddamn janky, but let's just embrace the jank, guys. Let's let's embrace the jank. And uh, that's that's looking up too much. Don't I have like a little box here? I can. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I got a little box here. Man, we're going ultra jank now. Here it comes, boys and girls. Ultra janky jankopotamus. Yes, it's gonna work. I know it. Getting a box out. Oh yeah. Oh. Oh, now we're talking. Yes. Yes, we did it. We did it, guys. We shall persevere. Blood out. Now we can do some work. All right, cool. So, where's that success quad? It's back here. Did I hang it up on the wall? I did. Um, so this is a fresh flight controller. Uh, probably on the wrong firmware. Uh, let's get off of Banggood. Nobody wants to be on Banggood. Um, something's going on with this. I was trying to flash the, uh, update the firmware on the crossfire, but it doesn't seem to be working. Oh, it's actually hung up. So this is what I'm trying, I'm, I'm trying to update the, um, the crossfire micro TX to the new... Uh, apparently this new firmware allows you to uh, lock it to 150 milliwatts. Otherwise, it, it's dynamic and it moves all around. Um, but, it doesn't seem to be working. I don't know why. And I'm afraid to unplug it, you know? Oh boy. Did I brick it? I hope I didn't brick it. What's going on here? Let's try this. Alright. Maybe that was the problem. I'm sure it wasn't, but who knows? Come on, man. What? What's? 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 What's happening? Oh, now I can't even hit. Oh, I might have bricked it. Come on, man. Really? Don't tell me that. Let's try this delete. Remove the TBS bootloader from your personal registry of devices. Later time you re-add this device, simply reconnect it. It'll automatically be... Okay, good. Alright, that's exactly what I wanted to do. Unplug it. Reset it. Plug it back in. Turn off the soldering iron. Okay. Plug the device in. There we go, okay. Ah, okay, good, good, good. Work, ah, there we go. This time the update button is not grayed out. Cool. All right, so let's give this a second. I'm sure it has to download some stuff. Um, who's got some more questions, man? Don't overjank it. 
unless the phone's in a good case. It's not, Kyle. It's in no case whatsoever because the screen is already broken. So what? What's it gonna break more? <laughs> the answer to that question is yes. I have broken it more since then. All right. Um. So. Is it just going to hang out here, you guys think? Why Crossfire, Ty says. A really good question, actually. Um, I stayed away from Crossfire for a long time. Um, mainly because I, I don't really agree with a lot of uh, Trappy's business and life and human being decisions. Um, I'm going to leave it at that. Uh, I tried... So, I flew someone's rig on Crossfire. I noticed a difference in latency. And so I went to R9. And I got a bunch of R9 stuff. I got that all set up. And it was just a train wreck. Um, you get, like... It, it's like playing whack-a-mole with the with the firmware, uh, the, the versions of the firmware, um, and then I had a fail-safe with the slammed alien actually um, that broke the uh, GoPro session and a forty-dollar camera, and, and it was just it was a real night. And then I had another fail-safe, and R9 was just a real pain in the ass. Um, so I went back to RXSRs. And I started looking into the different, there's some different ways you can get uh, the latency down. And they were kind of a pain in the ass too. And, and it was kind of neat with the R9 system being able to just go uh, a mile away without thinking about it. Uh, so I said to hell with it. And, and I, somebody was selling like four Crossfire Nanos, so I just picked them up. And that's where we're at today. So it looks like this is hung up. That's kind of cool. But... In theory, it's okay. This is just great. Um, okay. So now it thinks that there's... I don't know what the hell's going on now. Let's try it again. Unplugging and replugging. Well, that's good. Now at least it says firmware 3.2.1. Micro TX. Okay. It also says updating firmware. That's weird. Um, 3.2.1. Okay, good. That's the right one. Uh, but see, this is a... It needs to have configurable settings, I believe. Oh, okay, there we go, there we go, there we go, there we go, there we go. Hopefully. Hey, there it is. Okay, just keep trying. Just keep mashing is the, uh, is what we learned here, I guess. Now nah, we're talking. Okay. All right, good, good, good. So, we've got... Uh, max power 250. Dynamic power on. So, I'm going to leave dynamic power off, because dynamic power is what moves the, the power, the, the output up and down, and that affects latency. So I'm going to turn this dyna dynamic power off and just let it bang away at 250 milliwatts all the time, so that, oh, nah, you know what, I'll drop down to 100. 100 is going to be plenty. Um, and that way the, the latency always stays the same. I assume I want to be on 915. Um, 915 race, what the hell is that? Whatever. Uh, OP mode? Normal force telemetry? Huh. I don't know. My VTX active? I don't know what that is either. Device? Eh, whatever. Uh, Kyle K asks, was that 915 or race? Um, I'm leaving it on 915, that's where it was set. I assume 915 race has something to do with 
a more narrow band so you can have more quads up in the air at a time maybe I guess but I'll just leave it at 915 that's the way it was set um yeah I gotta I guess I have to learn about it was also nice not to have to know anything about crossfire but now I have to learn so I'll get that done at some point here all right so we've got that set up uh, and now apparently according to Noah and um, a couple other people it's very it's very easy to bind it uh, so let's do that real quick I got the transmitter on it. Nah, I don't think you'll be able to read the screen anyway. Um, let's try this. So to get up on Crossfire, it's a little different. You got to get into your model here. Glide CRSF. Oh, I'm already on. So page over. And our main setup menu, we'll go all the way to the bottom. And you have to turn off your internal RF that's going to open up the external RF and then we're going to choose CRSF and if you don't I, I learned this if you don't if you go through these modes and you have PPM XJT DSM2 but you don't have CRSF you have to update the uh, the firmware on your on your transmitter I had to do that earlier today um, so really you're not hooked up to anything how is it critical uh, channel range one to oh, I thought I could turn it down. RSSI critical. Okay. Wow. Chaos. Uh, and I think that's it. Yeah, that's it. Turn CRSF on. Telemetry lost. RSSI critical. Okay. Telemetry. Okay. Quiet. Quiet. Quiet down, woman. Uh, yeah. So that's it. Uh, so now. It's sending. The other thing that happens when you do that is it sends. It actually starts sending power to the um, to the thingy. Oh, you know, what I just realized I have to do the uh, I have to do the mod to this too. So, oh god, <laughs> I forgot about that with Crossfire. I forgot that it it has that weird thing where it just goes totally banana pants. Um, so we got this now. How the hell do I bind it? Where's the bind? I think maybe I just pushed the button on the damn thing. So, uh, where's the quad? Quad's on the floor. Let's grab that. Oh my god, easy. There's nothing for you to lose, transmitter. Alright, so, let's... So apparently, I just push this to put it into bind mode, and then I just push the button on the, uh, the nano, wherever it is, and it just magically binds. And supposedly you don't even have to hold the button when you power it on. You just push the button when it already has power. Um, I've already plugged this in with the smoke stopper, so it, it shouldn't catch on fire. Hey, it didn't catch on fire. Awesome. Okay, so let's push the button uh, Ty, the mod is you gotta break one of the uh, resistors or capacitors off inside of there or desolder it and then you have to put a little chip in in order to get the full uh, low latency setup. Always be careful going into a powered on quad with something metal because uh, if you bridge something with metal it'll blow up in your face I don't know where the, uh, the little button is I'm unfamiliar with these little nanos although I have a couple of them let me see okay so here's so I have that okay so of course it's on the hard side that's on the impossible to get to side yeah that's could guess that one I'm gonna probably get to it from up top Yeah, ceramic tweezers would be the jam. 
Or just plastic. It, it's not often that I that I have to reach inside of a uh, a powered on build. And uh, I haven't screwed up yet. All right, so I pushed the button. Nothing happened. Do I need to hold the button? I'm assuming that it should like flash. Tweezers with bamboo tips. You don't need to push the button, really? I pushed that button, so now it's flashing green. I should have looked this up beforehand. <laughs> Maybe now that that's flashing green, I can push this button and something magical will happen. No. Hmm. I mean, Christ, may I might need to have it plugged. No, they wouldn't. They wouldn't dare force you to plug it into the computer to bind it. Um, I don't know. I pushed the button. It went green, now it's back to yellow. I just pushed it again. <laughs> you want me to link you to JB's video? No, I want to do it myself the hard way. Um, let's see if uh, maybe it's bound, I don't know. Uh, in order to see if it's bound, I can plug it into the computer. And look at it in beta flight. Which will kill two birds with two stones. Let's see. SD card. Oh. Private Island says on my X90s goes with SD card and the transmitter. Choose Crossfire Micro TX or something, then bind it on by update tonight. Now, now I think I need to do. I think my buddy Brad was telling me that I need to do Lua scripts. Um. Damn. Let's just see that. Nah, it's not bound. Mm. <laughs> Ooh, Sean. Th that that sounds good. I like that. Uh, Sean said you have to wait a, you have to do it like, like right away. So I'll, I'll, I'll do everything at once. I'll push this and then I'll plug in. Maybe that'll work. Let's see. So I'm going to push this and then I'm going to plug it in. See what happens. Flashing green, flashing green, flashing green. And... Derpa, derpa, derpa. I'm assuming that when it binds, this will do something to, to let me know that it's bound. Um, oh, for God's sakes. I'm just going to look it up. Oh, pushing the button on the receiver. Okay. So plug it in, button on the receiver. Okay. I'm going to go here. Get this flashing green, I'm going to plug it, and then I'm going to button on the receiver. Power, and button. Hey, a green light! And then now it's flashing green. Oh, and a blue light! Hey! Good looking out, Sean Hales. Um, cool. Let's push this and see what happens. Now it's blue. I'm assuming that means that it's bound. Uh, maybe not. Now it's yellow again. All right. I'm assuming that it's now bound. Let's take a look. Oh, and it's not going to be in the receiver tab right away because I have to change it to uh, CRSF. Uh, okay, so let's go in here. Connect. Config. Yeah. And uh, where's CRSF? I think it's still serial based. Yeah, it is. All right, save and reboot. Let's see. Come on. 
Nah, not yet. Does it, is it passing power to the, uh, yeah, it is. So, it's a solid red light on the receiver. Let's try this. Let me push this. Do I need to push this button back here? To get it flashing green or something like that? Yeah, I don't have the uh, the Lua scripts on here, Sean. I'm trying to do it without it. If I hold the button, nothing happens. Hmm. Oops. Nope. Don't want that. Solid green on both is bound. Well, I definitely don't have solid green on both. So let's do this. Let me feed it battery power. And we'll see what happens. On battery power, I get solid red, and it just stays solid red. All right, so it's not bound. So let, let me do that. Let me do that little bind flip-flop one more time. Pull power from this. I mean, I, I guess... Maybe you have to have the lowest grips. I, I doubt that though. That seems Welcome kind of insane. All right, yellow. Now we're gonna get it to go green. All right. Transmitter side is green. We're gonna plug. And we're gonna push. Green and then flashing red. That's now flashing blue. You long press menu on the transmitter. Let me uh, move these away from each other. Sometimes when they're too close, they won't want to bind. Now it's so the uh, the nano is flashing red. Well, now it's flashing red faster. I wonder if that means anything. Um. not up is it maybe updating or something does it um i didn't think that this one had over the air update uh if you long press menu on the transmitter what's menu the middle one i think that puts you to the weirdo radio setup um thing and then if you page around well there is cro well that's interesting well look at that crossfire lua it's on the sd card what but now what? Execute? Waiting for crossfire. Oh boy. Oh boy. Waiting for crossfire. Oh boy. It's still waiting for crossfire, guys. i push this button again. Just push all the buttons. That's how I fix problems, guys. I just mash buttons and just try different random things until eventually it works. That way, I um, I don't remember how to do it. I have to look it up down the road. So I think maybe it's hung up. Moosh the buttons until things work. Exactly. Um, after you hit bind. Okay. So, let's try this again. Let's take this off, because it's driving me insane. Okay. We're going to go... We're going to go power. We're going to go bind. Button. And then we're going to go execute. Waiting for crossfire. And now I'm going to move it away. So it says, waiting for crossfire. The crossfire is yellow in the back. Oh, it's green. Look at that. It's flashing green. That's a good thing, I think. Um, so I guess I just give it some time. Maybe. Or maybe it's done. I'll give it some time. I don't want to brick it by unplugging it while it's... Uh, 
It's trying to do things. Sean just said the exact same thing. Um, cool. All right. We're figuring it out. We're doing it together. You guys are learning just like me. So if you need to do this, you'll be able to. Still flashing green. Um, how long does this usually take, Sean? Think it's hung up or... What drone did you start with, Ty asks. I started with a Baby Hawk, the, the original Baby Hawk, actually. It wasn't Baby Hawk R, it wasn't Baby Hawk Pro, it wasn't Baby Hawk Freestyle. It was just Baby Hawk. Um, it was a 2S. Uh, it was 2S. It came with a 300 mAh battery. It was on... 1104 5500 mAh uh, 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 5, kV motors very underpowered um, it was like a minute Sean says okay cool uh, yeah it was super underpowered but it was like one of the better micros available it was 100 bucks ready to fly I got it from Grayson Hobby actually and uh, they set the transmitter up for me and they, they put the receiver in like it was ready to go right out of the box and um, I flew a lot of batteries through that thing. I, I spent a lot of time flying that rig. And uh, upgraded it, different motors. Ended up going back to the same motors eventually. Uh, put it in a carbon fiber frame because it, out of the box it was a plastic frame. Um, yeah, it was, uh, that quad was really good to me. It still lives. My buddy Luke is, uh, is borrowing it because um, he's got four kids and not a lot of time to fly. So he can rip his yard really hard with it. So I'm glad that it's uh, it's going to a good home. All right, guys, it is 12:26. I am gonna shut this motherfucker down. Sean, thank you for the help. Um, uh, yeah, it had prop guards. They broke immediately, uh, but it did have prop guards for half a battery. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna shut this down. You guys are awesome. Thanks for hanging. Um, here is the Patreon link one more time, or maybe a YouTube link for some strange reason. Here comes the Patreon link. Where's it at? Um, again, my Patreon is where I put all the real juicy secrets, uh, and it just is a cool little hangout spot for all the diehard micro people. So, um, thanks for joining me tonight, guys. You're awesome. I will, um throw the acrobat back together so I can get some more um, video for you. I will figure out what the hell is going on with this thing. And uh, yeah, we'll uh, hand movement to drum us out. What kind of hand movement, Ty? Timestamp 1645. What did I do at 1645? Did I scream obscenities? <laughs> All right, guys, I'm out of here. We'll talk in the chat for another couple minutes before it shuts down. Um, thanks for hanging. Check out my Patreon. Uh, look up um, CID FPV all over the place Instagram, Facebook um, whatever <laughs> be good, thanks for hanging guys later on